Hello my dear students of class 7. Today we would be doing the supplementary text which we did not uh, do anything from there. We have not done anything from the supplementary text. So today we would be starting with the supplementary text and the very first chapter of your book is the tiny teacher, right? So uh, the tiny teacher as I have already written and I think many of you have read the story. It's not a story actually, it's a factual account of how the ants are extremely disciplined, organized and self-sufficient in their manner. Okay. And how we can learn a lot of the things, a lot of uh, life lessons from the tiny teacher. We can learn a lot of life lesson from the tiny teacher. Okay. So who is the tiny teacher? The tiny teacher is the so yes, as I was telling, the ants are the tiny teacher and from them we can learn a lot of life lessons. We can learn a lot of different facts about life, how to lead life and how to be, uh, you know, self-sufficient and to lead a disciplined life. So we will come into all that later. Let us enjoy the story. Let us enjoy the tiny teacher and I hope you have all taken out your supplementary textbook. And you have taken out your first chapter by now. Be ready with a pencil because there are certain important lines which you might mark for your future reference. Okay. So uh, let us begin reading the text. Though so very small, the ant is unbelievably intelligent and hardworking. Among the various kinds, the commonest ant is black or red. Ants live in comfortable homes called ant hills. Well, they are the tiny teacher, no doubt, but uh, we all are quite acquainted with ants, right? I mean, whenever we keep some kind of food in some places, which is connected to the floor or near the wall, they will find out some way to creep, creep up and get away with the food. Okay, so they are a nuisance for us, but if we do notice them as something other than nuisance, if we think of them as how the way they are marching all the time. Okay, they are marching in a straight line. Each of the ants are maintaining an order. How they are, if you look at them also, you can find how orderly they seem. Okay, they are relentlessly doing the same thing over and over again. And the commonest kind of ant which we find is the black ant. Okay, the black ants. So anyway, black ant, red ant, they can come in many shapes and sizes. But uh, the whole thing about them is that they have a very disciplined and organized nature which is quite amazing because they are such a tiny creature. They are such a tiny creature but still they have such an organized life. Okay. And they live in comfortable homes called the ant hills. So let us start the text. Name the smallest insect you have seen and the wisest. Is it the fly? No, it isn't. Is it the mosquito? No, not the mosquito. Then it must be the worm. No, none of these. It is the ant. The commonest, the smallest, but the wisest insect. The story of an ant's life sounds almost untrue. But people have kept ants as pets. And have watched their daily behavior closely. So we know a number of facts about this tiny, hard-working and intelligent creature. Okay, so people have kept ants as pet. Now this is very, a very new information to you as well as to me. Because we cannot imagine people keeping ants as pet. Anyway, so uh, what is uh, what does the author wants to say? The writer wants to say is that... They have been observed minutely by many people. They have been observed closely by many people. And from the way they lead life, from the way they uh, go about their daily activities, everybody has been able to understand that the ants have a number of qualities which is amazing in such a tiny creature. Hence, in the beginning of the story, we find the smallest and the wisest. You can underline these two words, smallest and wisest. Both these words are characteristics of an ant. 
okay they qualify the ant properly so uh, if we watch their behavior closely we will be amazed because they are a very tiny hard working creature so tiny hard working creature underline these words at the end of the paragraph it is given now come to the second paragraph and ants use uses its feelers or antenna to talk to other ants by passing messages through them can you imagine they communicate amongst themselves using the antennas on their head okay that is called feelers or antenna okay so using them they touch the other ants antenna and through that they can give messages what kind of messages do you think they pass hmm of course messages about the source of food the place from where they can find some food okay so they use their antenna to talk to other ants by passing messages through them watch a row of ants moving up or down a wall each ant greets all the others coming from the opposite direction by touching their feelers have you observed this i have actually observed this one time okay if you notice a uh, army of ants marching by the way the collective noun for ant is obviously you all know army right army of ant why do we say army of ant obviously because of the way they march in line in straight lines they march straight lines or curved lines whatever it is they follow a line okay they follow a strict uh, routine while walking just like the army people do and so they are called army of ants so they touch each other's antenna and greet each other which again tells us that they have a means of communication between themselves among themselves okay there are many kinds of ants the commonest among them are the black or red ones we have seen them since we were children but haven't paid enough attention to them we have seen them since we were children right they are a part of our life they are a nuisance as i told you but they are something else they are a tiny teacher as well this lesson will tell you that we should not look upon ants just like uh, the creature which comes to steal our food to create uh, problems in our storage places but as a creature which can teach us a lot of things much more than a human do okay so uh, it's very informative we can understand a lot of uh, attributes about the ant from this chapter there are many kinds of ants now underline this flag part also because we can get question from here there are many kinds of ants the commonest among them are the black or red ones we have seen them since we were children but haven't paid enough attention to them so we have seen them for a long time but we did not pay any attention to the ants we don't know much about them where do they live well the first information that we get is that the ants communicate with each other using antenna remember this the second information that we get is that there are many kinds of ants okay and next information is that where do they live where do they live in their comfortable homes called nests or ant hills they live in their comfortable homes which are called ant hills each has hundreds of little rooms and passages so these ant hills are also intricate structures very very well built structures uh, where there are different rooms can you imagine there are different rooms there are different quarters for different kinds of ants each has hundreds of little rooms and passages in some of these rooms the queen ant lays eggs so there's just one queen ant okay this is also something which uh, you should know okay just like bee kingdom there's only one queen bee in the whole honey bee structure honeycomb structure similarly in the ant hill there is just one queen ant okay and she lives in one a place where there is a provision for laying eggs others are nurseries for the young ones called grubs so the young ones of the ants what are they called underline grubs they are called grubs so the young ants for them the rooms in which they are kept they are called the nurseries 
workers have their reserved quarters they spend most of their time searching for food some rooms serve as storehouses for this food so so many information we got the queen ant lay egg in one lays eggs in one room some rooms are used as nurseries for the young ones of the ants which are called grubs okay so the young ants are called grubs they are called grubs and they live in nurseries nurseries are the rooms where the young ants live and then we came across the worker ants how do they live the worker ants their work is to do search for food and also to work for the entire ant hill okay so this much of information is enough for today's session i think read the section which we did till the session that we did and uh, next day we will complete this section and proceed to the next section so we learned a lot of information about the ants you underline the more important parts of the uh, text so that we can proceed with that knowledge towards the comprehension text okay till then study well